All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So before I dive into the main topic of the video here, uh, I just quickly wanted to say thank you, right? I know this season hasn't been smooth sailing. We're only one week in and Aaron Rodgers is out for the season. We only saw him for what, four snaps? It's been tough. It has been a tough pill to swallow. Uh, you know, whether you're a Jet fan that has been watching the team for years on end, whether you're, you know, a brand new Jets fan, uh, whether you're a fan of another team, right? There's a lot of people that are just disappointed from this news, right? It's, it's, it's such a gut punch. So I know it's depressing. I know it's disappointing. I, I know it's frustrating. Uh, you know, I remember waking up the following day just thinking like, man, like, did that even happen last night? I, I checked my phone and like instantly saw like, you know, people talking about the Aaron Rodgers injury, uh, like little segments from ESPN and NFL Network. And I'm like, oh my Lord, like, I can't even believe that, 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 you know, that this is happening. Um, but yet the Jets fans here are kind of rallying together, whether, you know, uh, people are split on the quarterback decision, what the team should do moving forward. We're all here. We're all hoping for the best moving forward with this football team. And that's why I love this fan base, man. I, I just absolutely love it. So I just quickly wanted to say thank you for the support that you guys are, have been showing the channel through this crazy, crazy, crazy time uh, with Aaron Rodgers going down again within four snaps of week one of the NFL season, and he's done for the year. So with that said, let's dive into this report here from Diana Ursini of The Athletic. She said, the Jets have made it clear the last 24 hours that Zach Wilson is their starter. I'm told that that is their plan heading into Dallas and beyond per multiple sources. While they've looked at every other option on the table, the team believes Wilson is their best choice. Now, during Sala's press conference yesterday, he literally said, this is Zach Wilson's team. You know, he is going to be the guy moving forward that the organization that the coaching staff, they have confidence in him. But at the same time, they are exploring other options, you know, uh, seeing what's out there and essentially doing their due diligence. And this is kind of my take on the situation. You know, if they feel as a staff that Zach Wilson gives them the best shot to win on Sunday, you know, this is the uh, the regime that drafted him second overall. And he has been with the team for multiple years here going into year three. Um, and they feel like he can pick you know, that he's done well in the offseason. He's done well in preseason. He's done well in camp. And overall, you're not going to be handcuffed at the quarterback position. Ha or should I say Hackett isn't going to be handcuffed as a game planner and play caller. Then it is what it is. Like that's that's their thought. But this is my stance. In the event that Zach Wilson doesn't look good, in the event that Zach Wilson goes down with an injury, just like Aaron Rodgers, just like Wilson missed time last season and the season before that, just like Sam Darnold missed all the time with injury, we have been in predicaments these, I mean, last handful of seasons where the quarterback position gets hurt. Luckily, last year, we had a guy, Mike White, that can step in. Now, I'm not, you know, at the point where I where I can say, okay, you know, I feel great about Tim Boyle. I think he has some likable traits, but I, I don't, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and uh, pretend like I have, you know, three, three regular seasons to go off of, you know, Tim Boyle tape and, you know, say, you know, make a calculated decision saying that Tim Boyle is better than every other option uh, as a potential backup here. You know, if Zach Wilson does well, awesome, awesome. But we have to plan for disaster. We have to have an insurance policy or a plan B. Why are the jet, you know, it, it's, it's football, right? It, it's not, there's a lot of sports out there that are non-contact. There's a lot of sports out there that, you know, the injury risk isn't as high. Zach Wilson can go out there and throw for 400 yards on Sunday against Dallas. He can go out there and look great against the New England Patriots in week three. But what happens if he gets hurt? What happens if he gets hurt? So that's my stance. If I am New York, if I'm Joe Douglas, I am still bringing somebody into the mix to replace Aaron Rodgers' roster spot. The Jets have the money to do it. You know, I know a lot of people have talked about Matt Ryan. A lot of people have talked about uh, potentially Carson Wentz or... Yeah, I, I mean, the names are going crazy, right? Fitzmagic, uh, Colt McCoy, all these different, Cam Newton I saw this morning, um, all these crazy names. Uh, I, I think for me, though, if I'm Joe Douglas, I want somebody in the building who I know can pick up the system quickly 
somebody who is going to come in and be engaged help Zach as the starter because let's face it it doesn't matter who the Jets bring in right now it's going if Zach Wilson is out there struggling if he is the reason why this team is losing football games he's just not making correct decisions with the football he's turning the football over whatever the case may be he's not getting the job done the overall production isn't there it doesn't matter who you bring in a quarterback it's there's going to be an onboarding process that needs to take place I would say at least three weeks, ideally four to five weeks, right? So my plan, this is kind of how I, I would approach it if I was the general manager here. By the way, I'm not saying I'm right. This is just my, my opinion, my take. I'm bringing in a quarterback immediately, as soon as possible. With every day that passes is one last day that that quarterback can be getting with uh, getting in the building working with Hackett, understanding the philosophy, getting the verbiage down, creating chemistry, practicing with the team. And I want that quarterback in-house as a fail-safe, right? Or as, as a plan B. In the event that Zach Wilson goes down with an injury, in the event that Zach Wilson gets multiple weeks to show what he can do and he's just not getting the job done and the Jets slowly start to slip in the overall rankings, right? We are 1-0 right now. That's awesome. And the Jets have a great, great football team. We're not asking Zach to throw for 400, 350 yards. We don't need him to. We don't need him to. It's just, can he can he manage the game? Uh, which to me is not a bad thing whatsoever. I mean, it, it, it's just a testament to how good this team is, how good the defense is, how good the running backs are. Um, you know, if, if Zach can't do that, then it's like, are we just going to continue to roll him out there week five, week six, week seven, week eight, week nine? I don't know. I think with this season, it's going to be very, very, it's going to be a tough sell. Now, I'm not saying Zach is going to go out there and, you know, uh, look bad or not be able to be a game manager. I'm just saying in the event that he isn't, I do want another out. I, I do want another option. So again, going back to my kind of plan here. I think at this point, you have to start Zach, at least for the next couple of weeks. And you bring in a quarterback right now, whether it's a trade, whether you're trying to, you know, bring in a Jameis Winston or a Gardner Minshew or, you know, whoever it may, may be, one of the uh, top tier backup quarterbacks, like a Teddy Bridgewater or something like that. The only issue, Jacoby Brissett, the only issue is that these teams know that the Jets are desperate. If the Jets pick up the phone and say, hey, Washington, would you explore a potential Jacoby Brissett trade? Washington is now in a position where it's like, okay, we're going to give you our insurance policy. A, what ha what happens if Sam Howell gets hurt? We're just going to go. We're we're going to be in your position, and then B, because you're desperate, you have to now overpay. I don't know what the overpay would look like. I don't know if that's a third round pick. I don't know if that's a fourth round pick or whatever the case is. But you can make that same argument for the Saints and Derek Carr. They have their option in Jameis Winston. If Carr goes down, Winston's the guy. Same thing with the Lions. Jared Goff, he goes down. Bridgewater's the guy. The Jets aren't in that spot, right? Unless Zach will, unless, again, as an organization, they truly feel, right, in their heart of hearts, that Zach is a top tier backup and he can go out there and get the job done. Um, but again, kind of going back to my thought process, I'm bringing in a guy immediately. I'm getting him in the system. I'm getting him ingrained within the Jets culture, getting him working with Nathaniel Hackett, really making sure that he is engaged. And then in the event that two, three, four weeks pass and Wilson isn't getting the job done, we have a guy, we have almost a relief pitcher in a sense, waiting in the wings, ready to step in if need be. If not, totally fine. That's totally fine with me. If Zach Wilson is out there doing his thing, great. I That's what I'm rooting for. That's what I want to happen. But it's football. Things happen. Players get hurt. We have to be prepared in the event that some crazy thing happens. Some, you know, uh, if, if a wrench gets thrown into our plans, just like it did Monday night where Rodgers went down within the first uh, couple plays. So that's kind of how I would approach it. And one idea that I keep seeing out there, I believe it was from uh, Albert Breer, you know, he suggested that the Zach, uh, or the, that the Jets should roll with Zach Wilson up until the trade deadline. And it's like, okay, because the Jets have a really good team in place, uh, this is kind of like a 
seven week trial here. If Zach isn't getting the job done, bam, we're at the trade deadline. Last chance to make something happen. We're giving Zach an extended period of time to, you know, uh, grow and develop. But my issue with that, right, I feel like on the surface, it makes sense. But I think because we're talking about quarterback here and there is, it's not like plug and play. If, if this was corner, okay, understandable. If this was running back, okay, understandable. But with QB, you know, if we get a guy at the trade deadline, there is absolutely no way that he can step in immediately the following week and just instantly know everything, right? I mean, like there's a, the only time I've ever seen something like this happen his was was actually I think it was last year with Baker Mayfield going to the Rams where like I felt like immediately he was uh, he was claimed by LA and then he was out there winning the game that's the only time in my entire life that I remember something like that happening so I think that is pushing it for me right if we're gonna go seven eight week uh, sorry seven weeks from today with just Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle is the plan if Wilson goes down with an injury and there isn't that third option anywhere else I just feel like it's a bit risky. Uh, it, it's a bit of a roll of the dice because if you want to wait till the trade deadline, now all of a sudden, you know, again, teams know you're desperate. You get that guy in house and it takes three weeks. And then what's the expect, what's going to happen for those next three weeks to continue to roll Zach out there? I mean, these, these games are critical this season with how good the AFC is. Got s teams are s loaded. The teams are loaded out there in the AFC. And uh, we can't just be... You know, in my opinion, at least, like I, I am looking at every game uh, as a massive opportunity to increase our record every single Sunday, not as some trial period or anything like that. So I I, I think there needs to be a sense of urgency. I, I think time is of the essence here. I'm bringing somebody in. I understand that, they're, that the Jets aren't going to go get a Patrick Mahomes or something like that in the free agency market. I completely get it. But I do want to have that third option. I do want to have that plan B in place. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.